Hey, good morning, church family. Uh, how are you guys doing? Thank you for those of you who answered from home. <laughs> but hey, uh, this is uh, week two of our quarantine together as a church. Um, hopefully, you're not going crazy yet at home. Hopefully, uh, when your kids and your spouse all get along. <laughs> But um, hey, I truly do miss you guys, and I am just longing for the day we can meet together again. In fact, uh, Amanda and I have already talked about it. We're gonna the first Sunday we get back together, we're gonna call it Celebration Sunday. We're gonna celebrate, uh, have a potluck after church, and uh, just just a, a party and rejoice together. Um, so I long for that day. Um, I will admit this is a little awkward for me. Uh, I'm used to jumping uh, off a stage during uh, my preaching and then also pacing back and forth and uh, raising my voice more. And uh, yeah, so this is, uh, I can't wait to get back to the normal swing of things. But I, I do hope and pray that you will uh, enjoy this sermon. Uh, I would encourage you to as much as you can, um, you know, treat this as if you were really at church. You know, maybe uh, turn off the cell phone. Uh, definitely pull out your Bible and uh, sit uh, and and just watch as if you really were in the auditorium right now, uh, listening to me um, preach. You know, don't get up and go to the fridge or, uh, but but just stay put and uh, enjoy um, uh, this teaching from God's Word. But this morning, if you have your Bible, we'll be in Hebrews chapter 11. We are going to be continuing our series through the book of Hebrews. Uh, today, we'll be uh, starting in verse number 7. Um, but if you were watching last week, last week we looked at Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. And we saw what faith was, or is. Uh, faith is, if I can just kind of build upon last week, uh, faith is is not this I hope so type feeling, right? Um, for example, I, I hope the uh, quarantine is lifted. I, I, I hope my family stays healthy. I, 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 I hope this is just done with soon. But faith is different. Faith is so much more. Because what faith is, is it is clinging to who God is and is clinging to the promises that he has made. So, for, for example, um, faith, our faith doesn't know what is going to be the end result of all this. But faith does know this, that whatever it is, two things are happening simultaneously. Number one, all that is happening is for God's glory. And then number two, all that is happening is for my good, your good. That's what faith is. Faith believes that God doesn't waste any opportunities. Faith believes that God is doing everything and God has a purpose for all things. That's what faith is. And then now in verses 7 and on, we're going to see faith in action. Because maybe you're watching this or you're listening to this and you think to yourself, well, I have faith. But let me tell you something. Genuine faith produces actions. Genuine faith always gives or bears fruit. Faith, yes, begins within. Faith is a byproduct of having a personal relationship with Jesus. It's a, it's a fruit of the Spirit. But faith is not just something that's hidden inside. Faith is always lived out as well. And so this morning, we're going to be looking at verse 7 through 13 to see three examples of faith. And then we're going to look at verses 35 to the end of the chapter uh, to look at the realities of faith. But um, again, if you have your Bible, I would encourage you to, to pull it out here. Um, and we're going to read this together. Uh, but verse 7 is we'll 
we will start off and start off in uh, so again Hebrews 11 verse 7 the scripture uses this as example of faith verse 7 here we go it says by faith Noah being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen in reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household by this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith so our first example of faith together this morning is takes us back all the way to the book of genesis specifically chapters six through eight uh in noah we see a a big a huge um picture of faith um if you don't know the story i'll, I'll bring you up to speed real quick but, but so noah it practically lives in the middle of the desert and then god says to him Noah, I have seen the wickedness of the, the people around you, and I am going to bring a flood as a, a form of judgment. But but you, Noah, I'm going to spare you and your family. And so to protect you yourselves, uh, you're going to build an ark, uh, a, a, a vessel, a boat, if you want to think of it like that. And the Bible doesn't give us a specific, um, a specific duration of time that Noah built the ark. Uh, conservative scholars believe it was over 100 years. Now, remember back in uh, the book of Genesis and um, that around that time frame, people lived much, much longer years. They lived much longer. And so imagine being Noah. I mean, God says, hey, I'm going to flood the earth. First of all, many scholars believe that Noah hadn't even ever seen a flood. And, and God said to him, hey, I'm going to flood the earth built this boat again over a hundred years of just waking up with the sons waking up uh, working on the art getting the wood pouring money into pouring money into it and just grinding it out day in and day out sunrise sunset build this ark that requires faith does it not i mean no doubt his neighbors were like what are you doing noah like water flood like we live in the desert can you imagine the ridicule that noah faced because of what he, what he was doing because of his faith in the promises or in the instruction of god yeah i mean that took a ton of faith i mean can you imagine year number 40 building this ark and you're like man i'm getting a little tired here is this thing really going to happen but i think what kept Noah going was his faith in what God had told him to do. That's a big example of faith. Not only that, we're going to see more examples of faith. Look with me at uh, verse 8 in the same chapter. In verse 8, it says this. So it goes from Noah uh, to Abraham. And in verse 8, it says this. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance and he went out not knowing where he was going by faith he went to live in the land of promise as in a foreign land living in tents with isaac and jacob heirs with him of the same promise he was looking forward to the city that has foundations whose designer and builder is god by faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar and have acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. Big passage there, but we see two more examples of faith. The first one in Abraham. If you recall the story of Abraham, um, so God comes to Abraham, who's living in Sodom and Gomorrah. First of all, God says, hey, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But not only that, Abraham, you are going to just pack it all up, and you are going to escape, and you are going to go 
to a place where you do not know, but a place that I have promised you. Now, what does Abraham do? He doesn't have a GPS. He doesn't have a map. He just packs it all up and goes. Can you imagine, like, his neighbors going, hey, where are you going? I don't know. But I'm going to follow God. Wherever God leads me, I will follow. Can you imagine doing that? Imagine having this mentality, this faith that said, Father, where you lead me, I will go. That was faith on the part of Abraham. And then we see Sarah. In Sarah, we see an example of faith that even in her old age, she held to the fact that God was going to give her a child. And again, this was a promise made to Abraham and Sarah, that together they would give birth to a great nation. And she's remembered for her faith. But something also stands out to me when I read this passage. Because when I think of the lives of Abraham and Sarah, if I can be quite honest, faith isn't necessarily the thing that comes to mind right away. I mean, I, th- I, think, of, I think of when Sarah was getting older and she's like, hey, Abraham, I am not getting any younger. I really don't know if I can give birth to a child in my old age. Just doesn't happen for people my age. You know, hey, why don't you go and have a kid with my uh, servant, Hagar? That's not exactly clinging to the promises of God, right? That's not exactly being or having faith and, and living it out. But I'm comforted. I am comforted by this. Because sometimes when we think of these heroes of the faith, when you read the entirety of chapter 11, you see this person, that person, this person, that person, he, she, who lived by faith. And, and maybe you think to yourself, oh, man, I could never be like that. I mean, those are people who were just men, that, that, that they were just phenomenal people. And then there's just me. I could never be them. But when I think of Sarah and Abraham specifically, Man, they were messy people. They were people who, quite honestly, we see examples of them struggling in their faith. And you will struggle in your faith as well. Our faith is not perfect. But there is one who is. And he clings to us because he is faithful. What does faith look like in your life? Because I think about it, you're not going to be called to build an ark. You're not going to be called to leave it all and go find some promised land and go start a new race of people. You're just not going to be called to do that. I don't know what God specifically may want for you, but I do know what some things he has called you to. I know God called you to this. It's found in Romans chapter 8, verse 28 and 29. Verse 28 you may be familiar with, but verse 29 often gets overlooked. I'm going to read it to you. We'll also have it on the screen here. Romans 8, 28 and 29. It says this. And we know that all things... And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. For those, now here it is, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. We know this. We know that God It is the will of God. He brings all things about in your life to conform you, to mold you, to become more like Jesus. I know that. 
Now, what does faith kind of blend into this, becoming more like Jesus? Well, when I think of Jesus, maybe some things come to mind. I think of sacrifice. If anyone sacrificed, it was Jesus. And if you, were, you and I are called to be conformed to the image of the Son, then you and I, too, are called to sacrifice. Now, what does that mean? It means sacrificing our time, sacrificing our resources, sacrificing ourselves. That requires faith. I mean, to, to, to give of our money. I mean, again, I'm not just talking about the church, but to give towards missionaries, right? Now, now you know, for those who are called to the mission field, to, to spread the gospel to people groups, man, that requires faith, no doubt. But also, it requires faith on our part to provide for them financially so they can go out and do that. And God calls us to sacrifice so that they can go. Again, that doesn't excuse you from going and sharing the gospel with your neighbor, family member, friends, whoever. whoever. But I'm just saying, we're called to sacrifice, to give. And that requires faith that God will, as we give, that God will also provide for us as well. That's faith. I, I think of relationships. Relationships, Christian relationships require faith. I mean, for me to, to love you unconditionally, right? Making myself vulnerable, making myself exposed. That requires faith to love and not to be not to expect to be loved back because hey I have needs too. And oftentimes we love other people, wanting them to give back to us. And if they don't give it back to us, we get angry and upset or we don't show love. But as Christians we are called to we're called to love unconditionally. And that requires faith. Faith that hey, I will love you expecting nothing in return. Imagine a marriage like that. Imagine friendships like that. And I will love you unconditionally, but I, I know this. As I love you, I find my joy, my love, my comfort, my security, my satisfaction in God. He will be my source of joy. He will be my source of love. He will be my comfort. That requires faith to love like a Christian, to love sacrificially, to forgive. That requires faith. God calls you to live by faith. To live as his son lived. I mean, I can go on and on about different examples. But the matter of fact is, we are called to live by faith. It's a wonderful thing. And I hope this message has been a blessing to you about faith. I hope that you are encouraged in your faith. But as we look on in our passage, faith isn't a feeling. Faith, again, is holding fast despite anything. It is clinging to who God is. And there will come points in your life where you need faith. And you will have hope. And hope is a good thing. But I believe it will be faith that will sustain you. Because maybe if you follow along with me, looking at Noah, Abraham, Sarah, and, and I would encourage you to read the whole entire chapter. You see guys like David and, and Gideon. And then all these wonderful Moses and so all these wonderful examples of, of faith and God blessing that faith. But then we see the other side of the coin. We see perhaps a more sobering reality. Look with me at thir verse 35. It says this. Women received back their dead by resurrection meaning people lost their loved ones that they were praying for. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with a sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, 
of whom the world was not worthy, worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though commended through their, through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. No doubt, these examples we see in verse 35 and on, they were hoping for a result. They were hoping for deliverance from their situations. But unlike Noah, Abraham, and Sarah, and the others in, in the Hall of Faith, they did not get what they had hoped for. But their faith carried them through. Their faith said, yes, God, I hope for this. But ultimately, my faith is that you are good. And whatever you do is for my good. And there are people who are imprisoned, tortured, who kill or killed. And maybe you think to yourself, what was God for them? God was doing exactly what he does. He was being God. You see, God doesn't always give us what we hope for. God always gives what we need. God always gives us. Our ultimate good. And there will be situations in your own life where your, your back will be up against the wall, where you will hope for something, and you may not get it. But faith, at the end, will carry you through. And I find my own faith, to be quite honest, not necessarily so encouraged by Noah, Abraham, Sarah's example. But you know where I find my faith enriched and challenged and emboldened by not those who at the end of, the, of it all got what they had hoped for but my faith is emboldened by those who truly sacrificed my faith is emboldened by the stories of James the apostle the brother of Jesus who for spreading the gospel was thrown off the temple roof and he survived the fall, so the crowds beat him to death. I find my faith emboldened by the Apostle Peter, who at the end of it all was crucified upside down. I find my faith emboldened by the Apostle Paul, who was beheaded for his faith. These guys clung to God as their treasure. If you asked them, did you want to be, uh, had your head cut off? Did you want to be crucified upside down? They told you no. But their claiming, their hope in God, their faith in God carried them through to the end. And they knew at the end of this all, though I die, I will live forever with the Lord for eternity. And that is the hope that they held on to. That is the faith that carried them through. You know what, Christian? Live by faith. And your faith may not always get the desired results, but God never wastes any opportunities. I think a perfect example of this is for those who don't know, my, my family, part of my family, my mother's side, immigrated to America from um, Cambodia uh, back in the late 70s, early 80s. If you know kind of your Asian history, that's about the same time that the Khmer Rouge came into power. And the Khmer Rouge was in the business of just massacring, murdering millions and millions of people. Long story short, my family was able to escape into Thailand. My my father, my grandfather was a farmer and and they had to escape and so they escaped into Thailand. 
and they were able to come to America because uh, five Christian families living in the middle of nowhere, Midland, Texas, uh, got together, pulled their resources together, and by faith said, you know what, we're going we're gonna to sacrifice, and we're going to bring uh, a family over from war-torn Cambodia over to America. And my aunt tells me the story. Of course, I wasn't born yet. My aunt tells me the story that when they got to America, these five Christian families were, were so zealous, right? They were so excited um, to meet my family, and they invited them to church. And my aunt tells me that they went, they were Buddhist. They went to the Christian church just out of courtesy. They only went one time. Um, and I can just imagine the disappointment in those Christian families' lives, right? I mean, I imagine they probably thought to themselves, man, we, we, we spent all this money and pull our resources together to bring this family over. And they were praying about it. And faith, by faith, Lord, we just want to bring this family here and lead them to you. And unfortunately, my family, uh, you know, um, did not become Christians. And I so badly want to go to them. I have no idea where they are. Neither does my family, but little do they know that from the next generation would come a pastor who would give his life so that people can come to know the Jesus that those people, those five Christian families loved. Their faith was rewarded, maybe not to them at that moment, but in heaven one day, I, I'm going to go meet them and say hey guys you don't know who i am but hey i'm i'm mike you know you you guys sacrifice so that my family can get here and little did you know that from that next generation i would come to know how much jesus loved me and give my life to so others can come to know his love as well faith is powerful god rewards faith so wherever you're at right now in your life May you grow in your faith. Maybe right now, ask yourself, what is the next step of faith for me? You know how you grow your faith? By taking an additional step of faith. And then God wasn't so faithful. Then you take another step, and another step, and another step. I pray that this message encourages you, blesses you. Guys, have a wonderful week. And uh, blessings to you.